Hello, my beautiful friends of the internet, and welcome back to another spooky episode. And I do believe that from now on, these are going to be known as the Spooky Diaries. I think I just like it the best, you know, because I feel like I say spooky a lot and like I like the diaries aspect and like, you know, she's just cute. I had other ideas in mind like shadow diaries, ghost diaries, haunted diaries, but all of those were pretty much taken. <laughs> so spooky diaries, it is. I'm actually very excited about it. I like the name. I just think it's kind of like fun, but spooky and like cute and just, you know, we're just the spooky diaries from now on. No more Phasmo files, no more Freaky Fridays. These are the spooky diaries <laughs> where every Friday we sit down and we talk about something ghostly or paranormal, or maybe we even go and do something ghostly and paranormal, you know, maybe like go on a ghost hunt or something. So that'd be really fun. For today's episode, we are talking about the Velisca Axe Murder House. <laughs> this place is really spooky and I watch so many like YouTubers and also I watch Ghost Adventures go to this place and it seems absolutely terrifying. So if you haven't heard of the Velisca Axe Murder House, just a little backstory, okay? This case is still unsolved, okay? We're talking about a true crime murder case, still no suspects, no lead. Well, we'll get into that, but like nobody has ever been convicted for these murders that took place in this house. And this was such a small town that this like shook everybody it was wild. It took the Titanic off of the front page of the newspaper. <laughs> this house is in Villisca, Iowa, and it was built in 1868, later bought by Josiah Moore in 1903. Josiah had a wife named Sarah, and they had four children. Herman, who was 11, Catherine, who was 10, Boyd, who was 7, and Paul, who was 5. On June 9th, 1912, the family, the whole family, Josiah, Sarah, and their four little kids, they go to this church event, and actually they have two other little kids tagging along with them. It's like they're friends of their oldest daughter, and they plan on going to church with them and then staying the night with them as well. So they go to this church event, everything's fine and dandy, having a good time, all eight of them, and then they come home, go to bed. Next morning, June 10th, their neighbor, Mary, starts to notice that none of the family members are outside. It's very quiet there, which is very strange because usually all of the children are out playing or they're taking care of their, like, farm animals. And, you know, it was just kind of weird that it was so quiet and she hadn't seen anybody there. So she goes up to the front door and she's knocking and, like, trying the door, but it's locked and she doesn't get an answer from anybody. So she calls Josiah's brother, whose name is Ross, and she's like, hey, things are kind of weird here because nobody's answering the door, it's locked, and like I haven't heard or seen anybody all morning. Something's weird. So Ross comes over, he unlocks the front door, and what he walks into is like the most terrifying situation imaginable. All eight of them had been murdered the night before in their beds while they were sleeping with an axe. Now, obviously, they call the police. Please come. The thing is that is so weird with this situation is that where it was such a small town, I guess word got around and everyone in the town came to this house. Like, they said that there was at least a hundred people in this house while the dead bodies were still in there. Like, it was a crime scene and the police just, like, let people in to scope it out and to just see what happened, I guess. I don't know. It was so, so bizarre. They even, they even let people hold the axe, the murder weapon. Like, what? Why? Like, maybe this is why we're not able to find who murdered this entire family. Because they were so stupid and letting everyone come into this house and hold the murder weapon. That is so bizarre to me. I just thought that was absolutely, I don't know, crazy. What investigators noticed about this crime scene was that the murderer used the butt of the axe. But I did read, okay, I read two separate things. One thing said that Josiah was the only one that was actually hit with the sharp end. And then I seen another thing that said that Sarah, his wife, was the only one that was hit with the sharp end of the axe. So I'm not really sure which one's true. Somebody was hit with the sharp end and then everyone else was hit with the butt end of the axe. And when I tell you they were hit, like their entire faces were completely 
unrecognizable totally unrecognizable another weird thing is that this killer decided to one shut all the curtains which i feel like is not that weird but they also covered all of the mirrors with like sheets and cloths whatever they could find they covered them all which a lot of people think that it was like he was having a dilemma of like looking at himself while he did these horrible acts or something like that. Like it was an internal battle, but very strange covering up all the mirrors. Um, and then after he went around to each bedroom unaliving everyone, he would then cover their face with the sheet or some kind of cloth as well. Then evidence shows that he went into the kitchen and he had a meal and there was like some cigarettes. There was also some bloody footprints and you know, that just seems like that could be some really good evidence. I don't really know. I don't understand how this is still unsolved, to be honest, but it was a very weird situation. And then the big thing was how did the killer get into the house? Because all the doors and the windows were locked from the inside, so they didn't think there was any way for him to get in through a window or you know, there was no signs of forced entry, anything like that. So a lot of people believe that he was actually in the house already. It's suspected that he was in the attic, which when I was watching videos, I don't know why they, I mean, I don't really understand the layout of the house because they call this the attic and it did kind of look like an attic, but it was right next to the parents' bedroom. So they thought that he just came out while everyone was asleep. He came out of the attic, killed the parents, and then went to the bedroom that was five feet away from that that had their four children in it and killed all four children and then went downstairs to the bedroom that was like next to the kitchen and stuff and that was where the two neighbor girls Ina and Lena were I, f I forgot to say their names Ina and Lena they were eight and twelve Lena's twelve Ina's I think Ina Ina or Ina I'm not really sure but eight so and it is shown in evidence that I see this is like really weird but they were all killed in their sleep except for uh, Lena they think that she may have uh, woken up or something and she there was like a, a mark on her arm that kind of showed that maybe she blocked it or tried to fight back you know um, but other than that everyone was asleep and how does that happen like how does everyone get murdered and no one knows or hear anything you know what I mean like it's just so the whole situation is extremely bizarre now there were quite a few like suspects well they say there's three suspects but really only two so there was Frank Jones who was like the state senator but apparently he was like business rivals with Josiah so a lot of people thought that that was motive I also seen somewhere that they said that Josiah was possibly having an affair with Frank's daughter so that was another reason why Frank may have wanted to murder him um, but some people were like well why would he murder the entire family and not just Josiah or like whatever so then someone said well maybe he hired somebody and then they thought maybe he hired this like really popular serial killer back then way back in the day but it turns out that that guy actually wasn't even in town so that was debunked so some people still think that maybe Frank did it himself and then there's others that believe maybe George Kelly did it and George Kelly he even okay well let me back up George Kelly was this preacher and he was even at the church event that they all went to the night before the thing about him is that he's extremely weird. Like, he's kind of perverted. He put an ad in the newspaper. He said something about, like, you can be my assistant if you, like, do it in the nude or something. I don't know. Like, something really weird that everyone was like, okay, this guy's <laughs> something's not right. But another reason why people think it was him is because that later that day, he got on a train and he was telling this other person that, like, eight souls were left back there. What does that mean? Because eight people had died. So maybe he murdered these eight people. And this was like before anyone knew like what happened. Like before the word spread, you know. Like it was literally like that morning before everyone discovered the bodies and stuff like that. So it was very bizarre for him to say that. So that makes me think that it's obviously him. I feel like that's like a no-brainer. Because also then later he confesses. He confesses to doing the murders <laughs> later. Like, I don't understand how like, he wasn't convicted. From my understanding, 
it was just like a really weird situation where the jury didn't believe his confession or something and i see another guy saying that it was like a corrupt jury or something like i I don't really understand i don't understand what happened there but he confessed to doing it but he never was convicted nonetheless that is the history of this home and why a lot of people do believe it to be haunted and now this is not a true crime podcast so we need to get into the spooky stuff okay if you're interested in true crime maybe that will be something that we'll do later (laughs) but for right now it's spooky time so you can actually go to this house right now you can do ghost tours um and just like regular tours whatever stay overnight all that good stuff and it seems everyone who goes there has some sort of an experience and they also describe the feeling of being in there as really just dark and heavy and like just really bad feeling like even if you don't really know the story or don't even really believe in ghosts or the paranormal they just have this sickening feeling whenever they're in this building common thing that people experience in this house are seeing apparitions having the feeling of being touched and scratched pushed the feeling of almost passing out feeling extremely dizzy and also just the feeling that there may be some sort of demonic entity in this house like they truly feel that something evil is there it's not just like the ghosts of the children and the parents that were murdered there it's like something extremely dark which leads people to believe that the actual murderer is the one haunting the house and i've also seen too that it's like the murderer had been i mean i guess i don't want to say like possessed but maybe in some some ways possessed by an evil entity that lived there that was another thing that george kelly had said in his confession he said that he felt like there was this voice in his head telling him to slay and eat he thought it was god telling him to do this but i mean maybe it was something else (laughs) like that sounds absolutely terrifying now like i said earlier the first room that is downstairs next to the kitchen area and stuff that was a room that lena and ina the two friends that were staying over for the night were staying and supposedly when you're in that room they say you can just feel the presence of these little girls and sometimes you even hear them giggling playing talking you just hear little girls voices or sometimes you can hear little girls crying in that room and it's also known that in this room if you're with others or like it's a group um sometimes you'll start to feel this divide in the group like almost you all will start to argue over stupid things like it just kind of splits rooms it splits the group up in that room for whatever reason it's also said that in that room they love to play with flashlights um apparently in 2009 a visitor had come there and he was trying to make contact with lena and ina i don't know if it's ina or ina i think it's maybe ina i've been saying it wrong this whole time i'm so sorry but he was trying to make contact with those two girls in that bedroom and he was asking them like can you turn this flashlight on turn it off for whatever whatever questions turn it on if you're here turn it off if you're here whatever and they would respond with that flashlight every single time like he thought it was just the most perfect evidence that you know ghosts exist because it never failed that if he asked a question they would use the flashlight to answer also i wanted to say that last night i was watching the ghost adventures episode of whenever they went to the Velisca axe murder house and they had these women on that supposedly lived there growing up they actually lived in that house after that stuff happened and they were talking about their experiences there and as little kids they were saying that they heard little girls um laughing and playing in one of the rooms and they went and told their mom and their mom was like no like that's impossible like you're making it up you know so they didn't really think much of it after that but then they said a lot of other weird things started to occur and that included one time that their dad was sharpening his knife on like this thing you know you know i don't know how how people sharpen knives but like he was going like this sharpening his knife and then all of a sudden they said it was almost like something grabbed his hand that was holding the knife and like turned it to where he stabbed himself in the hand because of their experiences there they also truly believe that something evil is there or you know the murderer who is obviously evil is still there and haunts the house more so than like the victims do and they were absolutely terrified to go in that house like she was like shaking and like wringing her hands and she was just so scared to even be in the presence of this house like it was just 
so bizarre. And then I also seen that this other thing where they were talking about how a medium went into this house. I'm not sure if this was just like on her own terms or if she was on a show. I'm not really sure. But supposedly a medium went to this house to um, investigate and see what she could pick up. And she said that she did feel that murderer there. Like it was just this evil negative presence. And she was saying that he was like giddy or, you know, really happy over what he had done. Like, it excited him. He loved it. Right now, the caretaker of this house is Johnny Hauser. And he's had a couple of experiences with this house. And one of them that I read about was he had a man in 2014 come to stay in the house. And he was all alone. But he said that he knows that he had a hunting knife on his, like, side or whatever. And then he, like, left him there to investigate by himself. Because obviously he paid to be there. So, And then the next day, that man was found in a pool of his own blood with that knife in his chest. He survived and like investigations said that they felt as though it was self-inflicted. But this guy was like, I, the last thing I remember was going into that bedroom. Uh, I believe it was the um, Lena and Ina's bedroom that he was going in there to provoke it. And that was the last thing he remembers. And then he woke up in the hospital. And then Johnny talked about something that happened to him himself in this house. And it literally gave me goosebumps <laughs> when he was telling this story. I heard him tell the story on Sam and Colby. And then I also read an article of him telling the story as well. And it's still like, huh? like I almost, I have chills coming up right now just thinking about it. <laughs> okay. So he was talking about how he was upstairs in the kid's bedroom that's next to the parent's bedroom. And he was in there just working on stuff, I guess. And he said that he heard what sounded like someone coming in the front door downstairs. Um, he said he heard the door open, someone walk in, door shut. And he thought that maybe it was just like some stupid kids just trying to, you know, <laughs> investigate the haunted house and just messing around. So he thought, oh, I'll go into this bedroom closet right here and I'll wait for them to come upstairs and I'll jump out and scare them, you know, just to like prank him back, I guess. Well, he said he heard the footsteps walking around downstairs and then he heard them come up the stairs and into the room that he was in. And he jumps out of the closet to scare these kids or whatever. And there was nobody there. <laughs> Is that not so scary? There was no one there. He thought he heard someone walking around and there was no one there, which I seen one time that he was talking about. He, uh, he's not, he wasn't too much of a believer and like, he hasn't seen a ghost, you know, but just has had some very strange experiences there. And I think he said after that, he like didn't go back for quite a few days to that house because it scared him so much. Like he said, when he jumped out and realized nobody was there, it like sucked all the air out of him. Like it felt like someone just like punched him in the stomach because it was so scary, <laughs> which I could only imagine. That sounds absolutely terrifying. So to this day, this case is still unsolved and a lot of people want to go there and try to communicate with the ghost to try and figure out who actually did it like that seems to be the goal of every ghost hunter it seems to just go in there and be like hey who killed you as if like the ghosts are going to be like he did it like <laughs> just like maybe that's not that simple but maybe, i don't know maybe maybe one day uh, i can't remember I, I think it was on ghost adventures i was watching they were interviewing this other ghost hunting crew that had investigated there and they had this evp over they were like who's here and the evp sounded like it said george kelly so that was so scary so like if george kelly is there and he was the murderer i mean he literally confessed to it and people said that he was super weird but also i feel like all the evidence i mean he literally confessed he literally said on the train like hey there's eight souls left back there like what do you mean sir <laughs> like that sounds weird i don't know i think he did it i, I don't see why eh, i don't see any other option but that was it for the Villisca Axe Murder House scary story, true crime story, spooky story, all of the above, just horrifying story. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments who you all think did it because I am extremely convinced that it was George Kelly, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was somebody that literally nobody knows, or maybe it was just a demonic entity because nobody had any evidence of how he got in the house. And it's also weird how all of them died in their sleep. Like, what does that mean? And then I see another thing where somebody was like, well, maybe he drugged them. Like, maybe they ate dinner and he drugged them somehow and then was able to kill them without them waking up. But supposedly the police, I guess, 
when they investigated, they completely kicked that out. (laughs) There was no possible way that he did that. So I don't know. (laughs) Speaking of scary stories, I have created an email address for us called spooky diaries at outlook.com. And this is where you all can submit your own scary stories, preferably ghost stories, um, ghost experiences or ghost stories that you have heard or anything of that nature. And you can email them to me at spooky diaries at outlook.com. You can also go to my Instagram at the river Rob and message me on there too, if you'd rather do that. Um, because maybe in the future we'll do a little, like you know (laughs) subscriber ghost stories or something and have a really good time with that so um yeah if you're interested email me dm me whatever you want to do but that was it for today's video i hope you'll enjoy thank you so 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 much for watching make sure to like subscribe hit the notification bell and all that good stuff because i am here every single wednesday and friday fridays are for spooky days wednesdays are just my random I guess vlog days or something if you're interested. (laughs) But yeah, I love you so very much and I'll see you all next time. Bye.